Hello and welcome to Beyond Texture. I'm Jessica, your curly educator for today. And today we're gonna to be going over our curly shag. So the purpose of today will give you an option to incorporate different variations into your curly shag haircuts so that you're able to customize your shape, whether it's wavy or curly hair or whether it's thick hair or fine hair and you have that variation inside the haircut to really enhance the fullness of the shag or really reduce the fullness of the shag for that really PC effect. So are you ready? I'll go grab my mannequin. All right, welcome back. So here is my beautiful mannequin. As I had mentioned, we're gonna be creating a shag haircut for her. So we're going to leave a little bit of the length, but what we're gonna do is start to reduce the weight in the bottom of the length of her haircut and start to create a lot of short interior layers for a lot more movement inside of this haircut. What that's gonna do is start to reduce the bulk that sits around her face. We're also gonna create some face framing fringe and start to customize the shape of the shag based on who's in your chair. So I'll give you guys some options as we go through our haircut. So let's get started. All right, so we have our mannequin. We have three sectioning clips to get us started. And I'm gonna actually give you guys a visual of the back. So this is her nose right here. So this is kind of a side profile. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to start from the apex. So that's the highest part of the head. We're gonna actually just come just below the apex. And I just use my sectioning clips to section. And I like to create really clean sections within my haircut so I know exactly what I'm cutting to and what I'm cutting, cutting from. So I give myself a little bit of protection in the sides and I try to even make my sections to be a little bit inside um, or a little leaner or narrower this way than the back of the head rather than super wide this way. This just gives me a little bit of protection inside my haircut so that I really leave the density for that connection piece. We're gonna mimic this same section on the other side. Section, as I did before. back and this will be our starting point so my goal here with her is to reduce a lot of this bulk that's underneath here and start to reduce the bulk that's in the middle which is going to create a lot of movement a lot more layering and shag that shag effect that we're looking for so let's come back down into the bottom and I like to keep about three to four fingers really clean section here this is establishing our baseline perimeter we've got our side panels out of the way we're gonna go in and just establish what the overall length of the haircut is gonna be and in this particular case I'm not gonna be removing a lot of the bulk or a lot of the length I'm gonna be removing more weight so just some couple pieces of tips as I work through the baseline because I want it to be a nice clean baseline I use these two, two piece finger fingers and I gently comb them through just to create a little bit of clean cleanliness at the baseline. I don't need to pull it taut and even this, these piece fingers are still really open. come into the bottom here and thin it out a little bit more like there's still quite a bit of bulk underneath there I could stay super low with my elevation but still incorporate the angle of my fingers And that's just going to tighten it up in the back a bit more. I'm always mindful of how much density my client has to create the shape of the haircut that I'm trying to achieve. Am I using their volume to create the fullness 
or am I reducing the volume of their fullness to create the shape? So in this particular example, I'm going to show you if I were to create a lower elevation target, but still incorporate my fingers to create more movement, it's going to leave me with the bulk of the, the density that we want if she was finer and still create the movement that we want to see in the shag haircut. So on this particular one, I'm keeping it straight out from the point of origin. I still incorporate this finger position and I'm meeting it to that bottom guide, which is the curl that I cut just below it. Pulling it straight back, kick that finger out so that way you're bringing your fingers back into a like parallel to the floor. And that's going to create a lot more movement in the back. Whereas on this side, if I take it, if she has a lot of density, a lot of hair, and I want the haircut to get leaner still, almost think of like thinning it out, but without thinning shears, I can afford to lift this hair up and still incorporate a finger position. So both sides have movement to them, but this side sits in tighter or leaner because not only did we raise the elevation target from the hair coming out from here to here and still incorporated that finger position of almost parallel to the floor. So this is an option if you have thinner hair or finer density versus thicker hair or thicker density. You want to keep a lower elevation on your low density clients in a shag and maybe play with higher elevation with your higher density clients so that you can reduce the weight of that haircut. Elevate straight off the top of the head and not switch the angle of my fingers. This can still layer, give you a layered result, but it's what it's going to do is start to create a little bit of weight in the crown. Perhaps that is best for your finer density girls. If you still have a lot of hair to work with there, you could go in and still invert your fingers. Now I'm a little bit more intuitive with my cutting. So if I were to have a fine haired girl at this point, I would uh, maybe drop it down a bit just to keep, to preserve a little bit of curl at the crown of the head because that's where we know that the curls bounce up the most. So 
So now we've taken out a lot of the weight underneath here, started to create a lot more movement in the haircut. Now let's go to the front. So now we've moved to the front of the haircut. We're gonna draw a horizontal line just above the ear, about a finger or two fingers above the ear. We're just gonna create that connection to the back. I try to be really mindful of how we're working around the shoulder. So either we come slightly back to direct it to the previously cut section behind it. But I try to come back off the top of the shoulder and not necessarily cut it on top of the shoulder. And that's gonna give me a little bit of protection. Now, my goal here is to probably already start to think about how to create movement in the perimeter. Because the shag is already taking the weight out of the base and creating movement inside the haircut. So let's go in right away. I dropped down one more just small section. I'm always basing this off of density. How much density do I want to preserve in that baseline perimeter? I'm going to come all the way down my first section. Now again, if I'm working with a low density client, I can cut it with the elevation low but pulled back with a really steep angle. And this is still going to create a lot of movement inside, but because I had a low elevation target, it's preserving the length and the density of this haircut. So let's do that all the way on this side. And this is gonna be great for a low density shag haircut. My intention here is to preserve some of the length in the perimeter, and or excuse me, some of the weight in the perimeter, but still create movement. So this is my guy. I'm almost cutting like this. Notice how I'm still pulling it back, but that's gonna leave me with a little bit more fullness in her haircut. And in fine density clients, we wanna preserve the fullness in our haircuts. So by pulling it back and dropping it down, I'm preserving the fullness of this haircut, but then my scissor angle is what's able to create the movement of this haircut. I keep really clean sections moving from the back to the front. Working a little bit higher up on the head. Before we were here, now we're here. Now that we've built enough density with these shapes below us, we can shift around our angle of our hair positioning. So instead of dropping it down here, which would continue to preserve the weight and the length, but it may not get us to the shape we're desiring to get with the shag goal in mind. So pulling it back, and now then keeping it straight off the back of the head, no longer dropping it down. And now we're gonna start to take our scissors again and match the guide inside from the previously cut section. So I organize it off the head. Let me just rotate her so she can get a better visual. And then I pull it all the way back, all the way back. And now that I'm using that previously cut guide and starting to create a lot more shag and looser layering inside the haircut. Pulling it straight back off the top of the head. And now with this bulk in the face, I'm just going to pull it forward and keep my fingers a bit open here. I don't want to angle my fingers too soon up here because then I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the face too much. 
So in these sections, I just took two sections forward. I'm just demoing this one. I brought it all the way forward and I cut it a straight line, which still creates a bit of layering. Now my fingers have squared out again. So now I'm cutting straight off the back of the head. Everything is cut here. Still pulling everything back though. I'm doing that because I just have one more section that I can work on and I can customize this section again. Another way you can create your face framing is have your client look all the way up and then look, have her, you stand up behind her and do that all the way forward. So now we're at the last section. Take a little peek at what I'm creating here. Now I'm going to come and do the face framing. I want to take out a lot of this weight that's in her face, face framing right now. So I'm going to come right up against the hairline from the part line to the parietal because I've already opened up the face down here. I'm just wanting to create some framing and some fringe. So I'm going to stand behind my client and have her look all the way up for me. I'm going to bring this hair all the way forward and just slightly over direct it over the nose and I'm going to start to take, a, my fingers are almost square and I say square is like straight down from where it is but because I'm creating a little bit of this over direction it's going to have a soft like sweeping fall to it. And these are one a little bit, these are kind of like a fringier, fuller bang. They're gonna connect in nicely. I could even come in and just kind of lighten up some of the corners here. And I would do that by bringing it forward and then incorporating this finger, the scissor position. And then I can drop down another section. And now I look at where this, where this falls. So I'm going to take it from hairline to parietal. And before I was here with my section, now I can afford to raise it up just a little bit more. Because anytime I elevate the hair off the head, I'm taking weight off of the haircut. So now that I've created my baseline perimeter, now I can create the softness and the fall. So now this is one more subsection that's going to kind of sit on the face or frame the face and also create that movement or shagginess around or behind the face framing. So now I'm going to come straight forward. I came down just far enough so I could pick up the bottom guide that sits right on the parietal and I'm going to use that as my guide and I'm going to cut straight across. What that's going to do is leave me a little bit fuller around the framing there. But it's going to give me some nice movement that can either create crown volume or can create face framing. And now I'm just about in the middle, like right over the ear right here. If she's got, well, let's do that. I'm going to bring it back off the top of the head and cut it straight back. Again, remembering any time I move this hair from its origin and I'm cutting on a low elevation, I'm preserving the weight of the haircut. Any time that I start to raise this hair off the round of the head, I'm taking out the weight of the haircut and I'm making this haircut leaner. So now she's real loose and lots of movement down here. We still have some nice crown volume inside of here. And now we're gonna continue on the other side and I'm gonna take out a little bit more weight. And this is gonna be an option that you can use for your clients who are high density. So stay tuned. All right, so now we've gone in on this one side and just created a shag with a lot more weight left to the shag. So you still see it's very, it still has a lot of volume to it. It's very full. 
This is gonna be ideal for someone who wants a shag or some sort of shag effect, but has lower density hair. And so it still creates the movement of the haircut, but it's gonna preserve a lot of that, um, that fullness that she already has. So on this side, we're gonna create a shag, but it's gonna be a little leaner than this side with the intention that this is somebody who has a lot more um, density to work with and so you're going to actually create more movement with a leaner shape with some of the techniques that we'll incorporate on this side so we're going to go off and start the same way so we're sectioning off from the bottom just doing a horizontal subsection just above the ear Connecting everything to that previously cut section behind it. Now we're going to elevate. We're going to go in and start to take the bulk out in these side panels here. Let me just switch my mannequin here. So now we're going to come straight back in our vertical subsections and start to angle our scissors just like this. So we're pulling it straight back and incorporating an angle with our scissors. Back and the angle with our scissors. So we're taking out a lot more weight inside of this cut because our elevation is, this, is coming straight off of this part line. Same thing in the face here, pulling it straight forward. I'm gonna cut with my scissor angle like this. Start in the back of the head. So before we were here, now we're gonna be cutting slightly off the head a little bit more. So just the slightest bit. Before we were cutting here, so it was like straight back off the side of the head, and now we can cut just ever so slightly out to the side. Still incorporating a bit of a finger angle. What that's gonna do, since we're rounding with the shape of the head, it's gonna take the weight of the haircut in, and it's gonna make this haircut appear more leaner. This is gonna to add to the dramatic effect of the shag. So again, I'm taking my section and still slightly pulled back, just slightly elevated off the head, incorporating that finger position with my scissor angle and dropping that. Whenever I move the hair from here to here to here, I'm reducing the width of the haircut. So if I'm here, I'm preserving the maximum amount of width. If I'm here, I'm starting to take the width of the haircut in. And now I can kind of round out my fingers again. So I'm just cutting at more of a square where before we were cutting at a more of an angle, but I'm still keeping the elevation target off the shape of the head. Now again, I can always customize the cut based on how much elevation I'm using in that section and the finger position that I'm using in that section. create some more of this face frame. Just slightly over direct that all the way around the side of the face. And that's gonna take out more of that weight and open up more of the face framing. So I'm taking my elevation, not cutting straight off the top of the head, still we're bringing it back. Especially now, 
because I'm at the part line, I'm cutting the shortest curls of the haircut right now. So by preserving my elevation, pulling it back slightly, I'm going to preserve some of the length and allow the spring factor of the curl to finish my haircut. Because I don't want to create them so short that they don't have anywhere to bounce up to. And then now as I'm reaching the front of the face, I can start to bring those forward. And I'm just cutting them square with my fingers. Shall I just get rid of everything that's kind of overhanging that fringe? All right, so now you can see we've created two shacks, essentially. Subtle, subtle differences. This side is gonna be a little bit fuller and heavier. This is gonna be really well for your finer density guests. You can see it's got a lot more fullness throughout it, still incorporating the movement, she still has some nice fullness towards her face framing. Again, this is, this is somebody who I would even say is thinner than this. Um, your guess's density is thinner than this mannequin, but it's still gonna showcase the shag look that they're looking for. Now then this side is going to be a lot of a thinner, piecier feel to it. It's a little bit more leaner in here lot more rounder in here where she's got a little bit more heaviness provided so it sits here or this one sits a little here so still techniques that you can incorporate for any of your shag haircuts but a little bit of shifting in your variations so that you can accommodate any guests in your chair so i'm just going to show you on the sides yeah it looks really nice in there super pc lots of movement where then this side, you can see, is a lot thicker. And it looks a little bit more fullness. Both great haircuts, depending on what your client's looking for. Like I said, this one's just gonna preserve a little bit more weight and fullness in the shape. Where this one's gonna open it up. So I hope this helps. Good luck with your shags as we progress through this season. I feel like the shags are gonna be more and more uh, relevant in our curly world. And send me your photos and reach out if you have any questions at all. All right, we'll see you soon.